And he, he's running through guys in, up on the rampway. He's picking them out. And, you know, he, he does Fandango and RVD and Chris Jericho, Alberto Del Rio. It just felt like John Cena was in, at the butcher shop picking out the next slab of meat that he wants to get fed, man. He's going to take it. Uh... Okay, here we go. After that shit fest of a pay-per-view from Sunday night, we move right into Monday Night Raw for July 15th, 2013. And it was really the two title matches that made that pay-per-view a fucking shit fest for me. And I already did my review on it. And fuck, man... What they're doing with Ziggler again tonight, and Cena just keeps trucking along, and Mark Henry, damn. So, I, I did that review. I got it up a little late, but if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, but this show opened in the worst fucking possible way. You got John Cena coming out, interrupting Brad Maddox. You go from bad to fucking worse. And when Cena is in the opening segment of a show, I can't. I just want to turn my TV off. I, I hate the man that much. I just fucking hate him. I just, I can't stand him. He, when he opens the show, it, I can't, I gotta imagine I'm not the only person out there that feels this way. There's gotta be fucking hundreds, if not thousands of people who are like, leak, to turn that shit off. I'm done already. <clears throat> so he comes out and people are booing him again. It's, it's just like, I should just make a soundbite of myself saying that. He comes out and people are booing him out of the fucking building. And I should just play that soundbite every single week. Because it happens 95% of the arenas that this guy goes to. He just gets booed out of the fucking building. And tonight they acknowledged it more openly than ever before. Cena grabs Maddox and says, uh... Oh, what do you say? Um... This is the only time you're going to be standing in the ring with somebody that, uh, you know, the crowd's going to hate even more than you, is pretty much what he said. And it, it's so fucking annoying that he acknowledges it. And he is the face of the company, so it is WWE, the company, acknowledging that, yeah, we hear you, fans. We know what you want. We know you don't like this guy, but... He's not going anywhere. He never will. They're going to keep him right there. WWE doesn't give a shit about what the customer wants. You, me, as customers of their product, they just... It, they aren't the only company that does this, but it is the most blatant and fucking worst example, well, best example of a company that just ignores what their customers are telling them. The customers are openly telling them everywhere they go that they want something different, and they're just saying, no, never, John Cena, more garbage for you, right in your face, slapping you in the face with his dick, more John Cena bullshit. And I can't stand it, man, I just can't. Uh, and then Maddox goes on <laughs> to say that Cena's going to get to pick his own opponent for SummerSlam. Like, he doesn't fucking do that shit already. Like, he's not already picking his opponents. Come on. And then Michael, or I'm sorry, John Cena calls Michael Cole a girl. And you see Michael Cole go, oh, John, you're so funny. You want to come over here and put it in my ass, too, while you're at it? Oh, John Cena. It's so funny. Uh, God. It's so bad, man. It is so bad. Oh, shit. And then Orton comes out. And Orton comes out, and he comes out walking to the ring faster than I've ever seen him walk to that ring in, like, three years. He's always got that slow, super slow walk. Almost Undertaker slow. But this time, he was power walking down to that ring. He comes out and he says, I'm not going to waste my opportunity like you did, John Cena. I'm going to cash this in, and when I do, it's going to be when you least expect it. And, uh, you know, you're not going to see it coming. And I like that. That was pretty cool. And then Fandango comes out. And almost the entire crowd that they showed on the camera, at least, 
was fondangoing. I'm not even going to imitate it because I personally think that that is some stupid fucking shit. If I ever go to a WWE live event again, which with the current product the way it is now, I don't care if they're giving tickets away at the fucking door. I got better things to do with three hours of my time than sit and watch this garbage. So, no. Uh, I wouldn't... I would never go to a, a live event, and if I did, I certainly wouldn't ever be fandangoing. There's no chance in hell you'd ever see me do that garbage. So I just can't believe that so many people are doing it. It's, it boggles my mind. And um, Fandango kind of got a pop here, and what happened next was, it was just a, a little comedy bit. And I was so spaced out with the Fandango bullshit that I actually found the whole thing a little... It was kind of funny. It wasn't hilarious, but, you know, it's it's kid stuff humor. It's fucking stupid. It was so stupid. It just made me laugh. Uh, and then uh, Orton starts attacking Fandango. Uh, and then that leads into the Eric Bischoff look-alike. And do you guys think that Brad Maddox looks like a young Eric Bischoff? I sure as hell think he does. And he even kind of talks like him. Is he somehow related to Eric Bischoff? I, I don't know, man. He just looks really close to Eric Bischoff. But anyway, he makes the match Orton versus Fandango. And then when we come back from the break, that's the match that happens here. And, uh... The, the crowd was saying all kinds of goofy shit. They were totally disconnected from this match. I mean, they were getting back into it for some of the bigger spots, but uh, other than that, they were pretty out of this match. Uh, they went crazy when the match was over, when Orton hit that RKO, and there was a really cool superplex where Fandango got a little extra height on the superplex, and it looked like a, it was a pretty cool superplex. I liked it. And, uh, man, Summer Rae, man. She's got a body, but her face is just fucking ugly, man. Her face, is, there's a lot to be desired there. And she was doing some terrible acting outside that ring. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. Jeez, Louise, holy shit. This chick needs to take some fucking lessons from... Even Vicky Guerrero does a hell of a lot better job than Summer Rae. That was terrible, man. Every time they cut to her, her, her facial expressions were just fucking ridiculous, man. And not in a good way. Like, fucking terrible, ridiculous. Garbage! But Orton won. I thought this was an okay match. Uh, the crowd was in and out of it. And it, it made Fandango look good. You know, I've seen much worse matches with Randy Orton in them, so this was an okay match. The next up was a Mark Henry promo, and I'm not even call it a promo. It was a Mark Henry gagging on Cena's dick promo. He comes out and uh, he he puts over John Cena like John Cena really needs to be put over anymore. It's just how hard can you suck on that Cena dick? And it's no surprise after last night, after the horrible fucking ending that they put him through last night. Now they're just rubbing Henry's face in the shit. And it just, it's disappointing, man. I'm not a big Mark Henry fan. I'm not. But it's just disappointing to see a veteran, a senior in the ring, senior in terms of his experience and years that he's put into the company, have to gag on the Cena dick like that. It's just, it's depressing to see this happen to the older guys. It sucks, man. It fucking sucks. But luckily, before Henry started tearing up from gagging so hard, the Shield came out, did a pretty cool triple power bomb to Mark Henry, and that that garnered an O oh, or no, a holy shit chant from the crowd. And like, I I don't know, I, this crowd was I feel like they gassed the crowd or something before the the show started to get them all fucking pumped up. Maybe they're handing out free steroids uh, at the door to get this crowd fucking jacked because um, these guys were fucking in... They were into it f making their own entertainment throughout the entire fucking night if they weren't into one particular match. And <laughs> a holy shit for a triple powerbomb? I don't know, man. Back in the day, you really had to do... A lot more than that to get a holy shit chant. And if I was in that crowd, they wouldn't be seeing me saying holy shit. You have to work harder than that. It was cool, but it wasn't worthy of that chant, in my opinion. 
So next up was Del Rio versus Dolph Ziggler. And, uh, well, first of all, okay, barely any reaction for Dolph Ziggler. And the crowd fucking explodes for Ziggler. The crowd was hot for Ziggler. Just like last, or, or Sunday night, maybe even more so than Sunday night. They were just behind everything Ziggler did. The, the, the spot with the ten elbow drops, and he does that really big one at the end. I like that spot. Crowd was fucking jacked into that spot, man. And um, at one point, Del Rio tossed Ziggler outside. Ziggler got major hang time, just went all the way over the ropes and fucking belly flopped onto that mat. Almost like took it head first again. And that was nasty, man. It looked fucking nasty. At one point, uh, Ziggler or Del Rio was on the second rope and, and Ziggler jumped like a super high drop kick and was able to hit uh, Del Rio in the chest at that height. That was, that was fucking great athleticism from Ziggler. Great match here. Good wrestling from both of these guys. I like this match. But just like the pay-per-view, right up until the end when that fucking cunt AJ comes out and, you know... I feel like a fucking fortune teller right now. I feel like I am in the wrong profession and I just need to be a fucking WWE writer or on the creative team because I predicted this six fucking weeks ago and I pretty much called this out last night, but of course anybody could have seen this coming. Uh, AJ comes out, costs Ziggler the match, and then Ziggler gets fucking buried by Big E Langston of all people. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? This is such garbage, man. It really fucking sucks. And so Ziggler's back in the fucking uh, mid-card. Here it comes, man. Welcome to the mid-card, Dolph Ziggler. I hope you packed your bags because you're going to be here for a long, long time. This guy's not going anywhere. He is not going anywhere. The WWE isn't doing anything with him. This, this feud with Big E Langston that nobody wants to fucking see, I don't give a shit about. Man, Dolph Ziggler, man, he is the most mismanaged, misused, badly booked superstar that I can think of in a very long time. I mean, I mean... Being that I'm a big fan of Ziggler's, it kind of stings a little bit extra for me to see this happen to such a good worker, in my opinion. And it just fucking sucks, man, that they're booking him like this. So the SummerSlam match for Ziggler is going to be uh, him versus Big E in some sort of relationship match with AJ in there? Well, let me tell you something. It doesn't get much more fucking mid-card than that. Wow. Jesus Christ, man. He just is, uh, he's just going down, down, down. And I said it, I, this is what I'm just going to say for Dolph Ziggler from now on, man. He's got to get out of this company. The WWE is going to do nothing with him, ever. He's never going to make it in this company. Or make it up to be anything great. He's going to be a mid-card performer forever. And he'll never get higher than that. This shit title run, that's all you're going to see in the future if they ever bump him up to that level again. They're just going to put him right back down. They refuse to let him go at the main event. I mean, he lost to Del Rio three times in a row and then fucking got squashed by Biggie Langston last night. It's fucking garbage, man. You're going to do that to one of your best workers? Get the fuck out of here. He's got to go, man. And this feud is stupid. If Ziggler wins, who gives a shit? You can't cut it in the main event, but you can win a mid-card match. And if Biggie Langston wins, it's not going to help him because everybody beats Dolph Ziggler. So who cares? You know, you're not helping anybody with this feud. It's garbage. And you know what? Because I did such a great job at predicting what was going to happen to Ziggler six weeks ago, I'm going to go out and make another prediction. I will say that within the next two months, uh, you're going to see Dolph Ziggler get either the U.S. title or the Intercontinental title. And uh, that will just cement his place firmly in the mid-card. And that isn't going to do fucking shit for him. But I guarantee you, I promise you, that's what they're going to do with him. If I'm wrong, great. I'd love to be wrong. WWE, please prove me wrong. But it's not going to happen. It, you know, it, it's not going to happen. It fucking sucks. And I just, Ziggler's got to get out of his company. It's time for him to let his contract run out and say, Welp, see ya, and get the hell out of there. 
Alright, so up next was R-Truth. The man comes out, and he looks fucking old as hell. I don't know what happened, but he looked like he aged ten fucking years since the last time I saw R-Truth on TV. And then... He just came out there to get pancaked by the Wyatt family. And I like their intro, I do, but... When he lights a real lantern and then blows it out on t on the Titantron, and then he comes out with this ridiculous cheap ass LED lantern, lantern, it looks fucking stupid, man. It this gives the guy a real fucking lantern. It just looks dumb when he has a real one on TV and then comes out with this goofy ass LED. And I even think I saw him like blow it to blow out the light. Fucking dumb. It's fucking stupid. But other than that, you know. They pancaked uh, R-Truth, and Bray cuts a goofy promo. It fit with his character, though, so I'm fine with that. You know, the Wyatt family's doing their thing. So far, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I need more to go on, because I really haven't seen too much of them yet. I didn't really watch them in NXT at all. Uh, up next was uh, Jack Swagger and Antonio Cesaro versus the Usos, and... Uh, this match was quick. One of the Usos got a roll up on Cesaro, and the match was over. It was fast paced, and I don't know. I wasn't bored, and I wasn't pissed off. So I guess that's something, right? Uh, oh, at one point, Swagger hit a Swagger bomb on, on an Uso, and after the match, he went ah. He sounded like a pussy when he screamed, and he always does. He's just got such a terrible vocal skills, man. The guy just needs to not make any sounds whatsoever when he's wrestling because he sounds like a fucking pussy every single time. Up next was Christian versus Damian Sandow. And Sandow was getting some you screw Cody chants throughout the match. And uh, Christian got a quick pin. When uh, Sandow was posing for his elbow drop, uh, Christian rolled him up and got a pin. Again, it was fast-paced, and I wasn't pissed off, and I wasn't bored, because the match wasn't long enough to make me bored. It was an average match, so, you know, eh. But the big thing was after the match, Cody Rhodes came out, attacked Sandow, Sandow runs away. You get a big reaction for Cody, uh, and that's great and all, but I got a feeling... Cody's just going to get fucking jobbed out to Damian Sandow. I really don't see uh, <laughs> Damian Sandow losing to Cody Rhodes. I don't. Cody Rhodes is just used to job out to other people. In fact, you know what? You know what would make a great tag team? Dolph Ziggler and Cody Rhodes. These two guys could have the most amazing matches you've ever seen. Ever. And they would never win anything. Ever. They could be the world's greatest jobbers, man. Spectacular matches every time, but they will never fucking go anywhere or do anything because they will lose constantly. And you know what? I wouldn't even be surprised if in the future you see these two tag teaming together. <laughs> Boy, what a sad day that will be. Oh, man. Up next was one of the Bellas versus one of the tons of fucking shit dancers. I'm pretty sure this was used to put over that new show on E. Whatever. I didn't watch it. I didn't care. And next up was the CM Punk and Paul Heyman promo. Wow. This was some good shit. This was good stuff. I mean, Heyman was great on the mic. Heyman is always great on the mic, but tonight he really brought it. When they get into these personal feuds, Heyman knows how to make things sound very personal on the mic. And I'm not even going to try to repeat some of the things they said because I think I would just be doing the segment an injustice. If you want to see a good promo, just watch this. Just watch this segment, man. It was fucking amazing. Eamon's tearing up uh, Punk on the mic. And then Punk's response to Paul Heyman was, was fucking fantastic. Punk's response got me so hyped up for this match, man. It got me amped. It got me pumped. I want to see Punk over the next several weeks leading up to SummerSlam do what he promised. I want to see him take out Axel. I want to see him take out maybe some other guys that Heyman just brings in, some friends that Heyman's got in the arena. Or maybe attack Heyman's personal belongings, his car or some shit like that, like Austin used to do. Just go after him like that. And then leading all this leading into the SummerSlam match. That'd be great, man. This promo was awesome. 
was a really good promo. Really good job at showing uh, their hatred for each other. Uh, and then at the end, Brock Lesnar comes out. And this was great, too. Punk said he was going to be so relentless and, and unstoppable at getting what he wanted. And that was Paul Heyman. And they showed this during the match. They literally told a story during this promo with both uh, their acting on the mic and their uh, physicalness uh, during the brawl. It was great stuff because Brock kept beating Punk down, but Punk kept coming back and coming back and coming back. Finally, he took an F5 on the announcer's table. The table didn't break. I don't think it was supposed to, uh, but I could be wrong. But it was great, man. Great promo. Uh, I'm very much very excited Look, very excited and looking forward to this match. Uh, um, so I don't know about you guys, but yeah, I'm pretty pumped for this match. I think this SummerSlam match is going to be pretty cool. Up next was some backstage bullshit between Maddox, Triple H, and Stephanie. I just, I, I pretty much made my feelings clear on this. I disagree with the owners of the company taking up airtime. Tonight was just this one segment, so it wasn't too bad. But I just don't care about these fucking people anymore. So I skipped it, man. I just fucking skipped it. Next up was the main event wrestling match of the night. RD versus Chris Jericho. And... For me, this match started out pretty slow, but it kept building and building and building, and they just kept doing one sequence after another with multiple false finishes, and I really got, it started out slow, but I really got into this match as it went on, and I was pretty happy with this match. I mean, it was a pretty good match. I would even say a pay-per-view quality match here. The crowd was behind both guys. You got RVD chance and Y2J chance off and on throughout the match. It was great face versus face match. RVD's hitting all his usual moves again. Uh, cool to see him do it against Chris Jericho. This actually, I was surprised they made this match for Raw. I would think RVD versus Jericho, you would want to put that shit on like a, on like a pay-per-view. And I'm just thinking now, this one interview that RVD had where he called Chris Jericho a fucking drama queen and a bitch uh, in one of his... I don't remember when this interview was done, but it was outside WWE, obviously, when he wasn't longer with the company. He was just bashing Jericho, and now he's wrestling Jericho here, and the two of them put on a great match. So, um, that, that occurred to me. But, yeah, good match. Um, crowd was really into it, and, you know, several momentum changes, several false finishes. RVD got that... He got planted with a DDT, took it as only RVD can take it, man. Looked good. Looked real good. There was a top rope uh, forward moonsault. I don't know if that's... I can't think if that's the right name or not, but it looked cool. Uh, Jericho stopped RVD mid-Hurricane Rana and went into the walls of Jericho. Good stuff. And RVD was able to get to the ropes, and at the end, he wins the match by hitting a perfect five-star frog splash. Very good. Good looking frog splash, man. Very nicely done. One, two, three. RVD wins. Good stuff. But then the main event in the main event time slot was Cena coming out to pick his opponent for SummerSlam. And what did you think was going to happen? I knew this was going to happen as soon as they, they said this bullshit. He's going to let the fans choose for him. Of course that's going to happen. Of course it is. And these people are still booing him. Like, actually, no, I take that back. When he said he was going to let the fans decide, if you go back and watch the video, there's, like, no reaction whatsoever. I think even the crowd at this point was just like, oh, this fucking guy is going to try to use us to get behind him again? We just don't like you. Like, I feel like that was the general feeling in the crowd, except for the kids in the audience. Like, just get off of it, John Cena. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> <laughs> then, oh man and he, he's running through guys in, up on the rampway he's picking them out and you know he, he does Fandango and RVD and Chris Jericho Alberto Del Rio it just felt like John Cena was in, at the butcher shop picking out the next slab of meat that he wants to get fed man and he's going to take it uh, uh. so he picks Daniel Bryan obviously Daniel Bryan is the most over guy in the company. So Daniel Bryan comes down. Crowd pops huge. 
You, his theme music plays, big yes chance. He's screaming yes, yes, yes in John Cena's face and all around the ring like a crazy person. Good stuff, man. I'm happy to see Daniel Bryan finally get that spot. I hate the way they did it because they make Cena look like the fucking pristine, fucking completely clean good guy being the absolute best man in the world picking picking uh, Daniel Bryan, handpicking him to to compete against him. Just saying that sounds like fucking garbage, man. It's just bullshit. And how great would it have been if while Daniel Bryan was screaming yes to John Cena, if Cena would just threw the belt on the ground, picked him up and gave him the fucking fireman's carry. I would have cheered for that. That would have been fucking spectacular. But no, that's something different. And that's not what the WWE is all about. The WWE is all about how low can we get our ratings, how little money can we possibly make, how many fans can we possibly drive away. That's what they're all about, baby. <sighs> and as Raw went off the air, Michael Cole actually said that Daniel Bryan was the hottest superstar in the company right now. He's not a superstar in WWE right now. That's what he said. I was surprised that they would openly make that statement and close the show with that, with John Cena standing in the ring with Daniel Bryan. Now let me tell you something. You think that that's going to keep the WWE from turning Daniel Bryan heel? Because I don't. But I really want to know what you guys think. Do you think that heel turn is coming up? Do you think next week or the week after they're going to take all that crowd reaction, all that all that love for Daniel Bryan, and they're going to piss all over it and turn him into a pussy heel? Is that what you think is going to happen? That's, that's what I think is going to happen. And, uh, you know, Daniel Bryan versus John Cena, I'm excited. Are you guys excited? I want to know. <clears throat> Because I, can, I know what I think is going to happen, man. They're going to, all that heat for Daniel Bryan, white fucking hot with the crowd. They're just going to, they're just going to destroy it, man. It's coming. I am, I am like 99% sure that it's coming. If I'm wrong, great. Like I said, I'd love to be proven wrong, but I just don't think I am. But we'll see what happens, I guess. So overall, this Raw... <clears throat> Despite the John Cena garbage and my absolute fucking disdain for the way they're handling Dolph Ziggler, there was actually one, there was actually two good wrestling matches on this show, and the, the Orton Fandango match I thought was okay too. So overall, more positives than negatives. I'm going to go ahead and call this, I'd say I'd call it an average to good show. I don't know if I want to call it a good show, but Ziggler and Cena stuff really pissed me off, but it wasn't bad, so I'll take it. All right, that's going to do it for me, JB Squared, 61279, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.